All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Welcome to Koch Keer Bulls, and thank you, uh, Hans and Esther, for inviting me to talk to Sarah today about this fantastic installation that we are in the middle of. I will tell you more about that. Um, my name is Nienke van der Waal. I uh, have worked in the arts for about 20 years in various capacities, uh, one of them being as the founder of Young Collector Circle, a platform that encourages people to support artists, and the most fun to support artists, the most fun way, is by buying their art. So I highly encourage you to do that today as well. Um, I'm really happy that we're here. I'm going to put my water down. I appreciate it, but I'm going to put it over here really quickly. Um, uh, Esther and Hans told me, I'm going to talk a little bit, so you'll have to awkwardly stand here and listen to me talk about you. Sorry. Um, I was talking to Hans and Esther yesterday, and they were telling me how they first discovered your work, how they first learned about it. And it's 14 years ago, when Sarah was still in school, and they encountered a GIF that she had made, and were immediately intrigued and started following her. And in 2011, I think, they made the first show with you here in this space and many, many more afterwards in this space, but also projects outside of here. And in those early years of your collaboration, I was living in this neighborhood, and I remember walking by here one day, this window was open, and there was a huge painting of Sarah's on this wall. It was about two by three meters, I think. I mean, really, really a big painting. And it was an image of Sarah in a white dress with blood stains on the dress, menstrual blood stains. And there were people surrounding you. I hope I'm describing it right. And they were all looking horrified and disgusted at this woman who was menstruating. And I was really, really impressed. I think for me, that was the moment when I really fell in love with Sarah's work and started following her over the years silently because she didn't know about that. Uh, the work was called Menstruate with Pride. And the reason why I've loved her work is because I feel that her conceptual and very bright mind uh, find so many different ways, shapes, and forms to communicate, as you can see here today in this wonderful installation. Um, so from her video work that she does, a video that I also uh, saw here, for instance, was called Freedom of Speech. And it's a video in which she addresses uh, stereotypes, stereotypical portrayal of boys and girls and women and men. And while she's talking about that, how she addresses that in her work, a hand, you can see whose hand it is, continuously and irregularly slaps her face. It's very distressing to watch, and it's a beautiful way I, I feel to talk about how uh, often voices, women's voices are being silenced, especially when talking about topics like this. But also her photography, the way she portrayed herself as Disney princesses in very cool professions, such as surgeons and uh, politicians. Maybe you all know these works that I'm talking about. Uh, and also her works with signs. One of the signs that has always stuck with me that she held up in her photograph and read, the opposite of a feminist is an arsehole. I said arsehole today, not asshole. <laughs> and recently she did a beautiful performance at Art Rotterdam where she asked the question, why do men hate women? Central to her work is always her deep vulnerability and her brutal honesty. And for me, I feel it's rare when you see an artist that pushes issues so ahead of the curve, so ahead before we're all talking about things, and artist brings to the forefront these topics that we should be concerned about, like the menstruation painting that I call it lovingly, um, uh, which is now, I feel, this painting is from 2011. I looked it up this morning, but now I feel it's a topic we talk about more and more about normalizing menstruation, but back in those days it wasn't. So this idea of an artist that's pushing the boundaries, that's pushing issues that we all need to talk about is something that I really appreciate in your arts. Uh, Sarah combines a very strong narrative on very complex matters such as identity, religion, feminism, the art world itself, xenophobia. And I read in an interview somebody said your work is one-third radicalism, one-third humor, and one-third technical perfection. Isn't that a lovely way to think about it? Yeah. There's nice things out there online about you. And you put yourself front and center in your work, which makes your work also feel deeply personal, but also universal. And that brings me to this installation right here. Please come in. There's plenty of space. <laughs> OK. Um, very universal as well. When this installation was first shown at Art Rotterdam, people from all walks of life, different ages, whether they were parents or not, or whether, whether they were aspiring to become a parent or didn't want to be a parent at all, were all deeply moved by this uh, personal installation and 
there was some, a lot of tears shed even I've, uh, I've heard. So I'm really excited. I will stop talking now that we have the opportunity to talk to you yourself about this installation today. And of course, the beautiful book, Labor of Love, that uh, is being launched today. So first, a round of applause, please, for Sarah Maple. <laughs> Shall we have a seat? Yeah, I'm sorry, I just keep standing. I feel the ventilator is on us. That's kind of nice, right? Yeah. Uh, so Sarah, can you tell us a little bit about how this installation came about? So I decided, me and my partner decided to log every time that our baby was fed. Initially that was just done practically so we would know when the baby was fed basically. I keep turning around on this still. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm like, eh. um, And then I realised all this data was really interesting. I was looking back on the data, there's just reams and reams of data on this app. And I thought, how is there a way that I can talk about this or show this in a way that, in a visually sort of, I mean, some, a way to show the overwhelming nature of the work. Um, and when I was hanging it yesterday, I just kind of thought how interesting it is that, you know, as a, evolving as a parent and everything, and as a woman or whatever, um, the work takes on new meanings. All the different pieces mean something new. And um, I think that's actually the case with a lot of my work, that it's always evolving. Yeah. Yeah, because these are 650 screen prints of the same image that yeah. you've hand, uh, uh, yeah, did something to manually. Those 650 feedings, you didn't even mention that, but yeah. that was in the first three months. Yes. So yes. this is three months of unpaid female labor, if you will, because that's yeah. also what the installation talks about. Yes, exactly, yes. So, um, yeah, I decided to cap it at three months because it would just be too much, basically. So, yeah, then it was exactly 650. And I thought it would be an interesting idea to have this you know, this idea of like in our history of like motherhood is that Madonna and child, it's all perfect. And it's like, you know, a way to take that and kind of always destroy it or rewrite it or rethink it. So just showing that this many times. And then the idea was to keep the baby intact in every single picture, but to cover me in some way. So make me invisible in some way, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, just. I really wanted to look at all that work that's done, I think, by women and thinking about my own mum and all the work she did and just sort of trying to acknowledge that, I think. Yeah, because I think when you, uh, I read this anyway, when you were pregnant, you were taking a parenting class, so it's all good parents try to do, <laughs> and you ended up in a conversation about breastfeeding and one of the women in the group said uh, about the reasons why not or why to breastfeed. It's such a cheap way to feed your child. Yeah, yeah. And that made you think, yeah, is it yeah. though? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was so funny in those classes. Um, all the things that, it was so funny because they were just sort of like, oh, you know, you should do this, you should do that all the time. And it was like, oh, you should breastfeed. And then, you know, the idea that it's free, I just thought, hmm, you know, how can you quantify that? So that time is meaningless. That time doesn't mean it. It's like you can't put. A, you're not putting a value on that. Um, so I thought that was really an interesting way. That stayed in my mind. Yeah. And then when we had her, and I was thinking about that labour again. That's kind of ins what inspired all this as well. Yeah, exactly. Because this is the breastfeeding, but then there's also the actually being pregnant and to having yes. to recover and all the doctor visits and all the time yeah. that is unpaid to female labor. Was that a topic that you were concerned with or thought about or used in your work before this installation? Yeah, I think um, all issues that relate, I think, to women's issues and equality are things that inspire me a lot. Um, and so this felt like, felt like the natural step. And it, I just thought, you know, I don't want anyone to know I'm having a baby. I felt like that yeah. a bit. And then I just, you know, couldn't help but talk about it, basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> Because feminism and um, the idea of feminism is very, uh, uh, well, it's, it's like a, you would say in Dutch, a red thread, a recurring theme in your uh, work. Yeah. When did you start thinking about feminism? When did you realize you were a feminist? Um, well, I often tell this story, and this work has been shown by Hans and Esther at the gallery years ago. Um, it's a piece called Signs. And so basically I was art school and I was in the last year and it was like, I think like the last semester or something. And 
when you're at art school, you have to go around and do all these crits where you talk about your work and you have to give everyone feedback. Um, oh, yeah, we will show, we'll do the big reveal. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, we'll, we'll do the big reveal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll the okay, um, so basically, I noticed when we were talk everyone was talking about their work, when the men spoke about their work, everyone was like, hmm, yeah, yeah, you know, really like taking it seriously. And then when the women spoke about their work, it was just like, you know, what you're talking about, it's rubbish, you know, everyone Trivial. was so having a go at the women. And the women were doing it as well. I was doing it to the women, we were all doing it. And then on the way home, I was just digesting that. And I thought, that was weird. And that happens all the time. And I was just thinking, I was getting more annoyed about it. And I, it was the first time in my life that I realized that my gender might hold me back, basically. I was that proper realization. And then this piece came into my head. <laughs> it says, I wish I had a penis because then I'd fuck you and then steal your job. <laughs> so, <laughs> Which also, I think, was the gift that Hans saw, yeah. that yeah. first work. It was made into a gift with the three images, yeah. uh, which triggered the collaboration between the gallery and you. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. and it, it was the reaction to this work that really made me think, mm, because everyone in, I showed it in my next crit, I took this piece and showed it, and everyone was just like, oh my God, you know, because this was 2007, so feminism wasn't really talk, been talked about then. And I didn't even know what feminism was. I, I just, I, I didn't, it, this wasn't like a feminist piece to me. I was just reacting to how I felt. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was only later when I met other friends who said, actually, you know, you, what you're doing is feminist. And I, when I realized that and I looked into it more and I, my work just went, you know. Yeah. So it just became yeah, more about that basically, yeah. Great. So in your earlier work, we all see that on the cover, I'll give this back to you. Um, I feel mostly in your earlier work, uh, religion also played a really big part and you come from a family with a Muslim parent and a Christian parent. Is that still also within this installation, does it still play a role in your work? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I think even more now having my own daughter, and because I was brought up very, very mixed, so it was quite confusing in a way. It's like, what are you? What culture do you belong to? You do, are you one thing or are you another thing? And I think that there's a lot of shame involved in that as well. And, and talking to more people about it now, I think actually this is something really interesting to talk about. So in my next body of work, I'm talking about more about this and thinking about how I raise my daughter and what things, what cultural things to, you know, um, pass down and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, and I think... Just the way I was raised, I think, does come into everything I make, even yeah. if it's not directly related to it. I think it's always underneath, I think. Yeah. And so uh, motherhood or becoming a mother, transitioning into motherhood has obviously played a big part in inspiring this installation. Is, are there going to be, can we expect also more work about this topic in your life and about the difference, what triggers you when you think or now that you're learning about motherhood or have experienced it, are there any triggers for new works in there? Definitely, Can I've we actually... Get a sneak peek of that? Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's a peek because it's not quite ready, but I made this video, it's slightly harrowing, but I didn't expect it to be. Okay. Um, and it was meant to be, basically it's about, meant to be about how, you know, you loving your child so much and then you're like, ah, and they're like, go away. <laughs> or they're like, no, or they don't want to hug you. Or you're like, ah. They sort of, and I thought, how is that going to manifest itself when she's older and that sort of role as mother and, well, mother and daughter and everything? So I made this one video, but I don't want to say yet because I think okay. it needs to be seen. So I'll show you, you guys get the first yeah, yeah. viewing. They'll be here <laughs> before you know it, exactly. And um, a lot of your work is, of course, also about stere stereotypes. Is that something that is also that you've changed your mind about now that you are a mother? Is that? Yeah, I think what I've realized is that how deeply embedded stere that gender stereotypes are. And I'm, my, all my work, I've been like, you know, I'm not going to say, I, I want to say that women and men are the same and we're socialized into being feminine. And, you know, and I, I was always trying to talk about that in my work. And then when I had, before I even had when I was pregnant, I was already going, oh, my little girly, and what's she going to be, mummy's girl? And, and I thought, oh, my God, I've fought so hard against this, and now automatically I'm going into that role of a little girl. And I just thought, and now I need to, like... Buy her still. dinosaurs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I was so interested in that. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's definitely going to be in there. This unconscious yeah. bias exactly. that we all have, whether you're super aware of it and working with it every day, it yeah. still seeps in. It's still yeah. there, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, exactly.
And so for this work, because you always play, I mean, I don't know always, but I think pretty much always play the main part in your work. Uh, it's often self-portraits. You're barely visible, of course, in this work. Your baby takes the center stage, but it's still uh, you. Why is it important for you? Are you and are you playing uh, a character, or are we looking at you, or as the artist you? How do we? How can we perceive that? Um, I don't see it as me in any of the pictures. I see it as another person, um, and I feel like it's always a performance, basically. Mm -hmm. So, if and like I always take about four hundred pictures to get the one right one, and if I feel like it's my face then I won't use it. <laughs> it has to be like a performance face. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's sort of keeping a, you know. A bit of a distance. Yes. Yeah, but yeah. it's still recognizably you. Yeah. So you are really putting yourself out there. Yeah. 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 But I think, yeah, I suppose I use myself as a tool to say something else, I think. Yeah. So within this installation, 650 prints, all, uh, you've changed every single one of them. Can you talk about some of the different uh, recurring themes maybe that are in there or techniques that you've used? Um, so over the past few years, I've been collaging a lot more. So I really wanted to implement a lot of collage. So there's a lot of um, pictures of breasts or like there's one of like a cow being milked. Um, and I love like, I really like hands in my images. So there's lots of them with the hands are like crossing over the body and like almost like dismissing a bit like that. Um, painted hands. And then I've um, a lot of stitching because that's obviously associated as a very feminine yeah. um, technique. And my grandmother used, when she came to this country, she started to sew jackets. Like a lot of immigrants at that time were doing that. And so that's kind of a nod to that as well. And um, the buttons on there are my other grandmother from my, dad's side they're her buttons so I use those as well so kind of a nod to my grandparents my grandmothers essentially um, and a lot of them are funny and like I had this book that was from the 70s about gynecology there's some hilarious things in there that I've stuck on what that one over there I think it's just something about like a man may, can also get attached to the child if he spends time with it well, yeah. yeah yeah something like that like a man may also have a chat like as if men wouldn't have attachment yeah. to their baby like it's something you know something mad so um, <clears throat> a lot of it's from that book too and all sorts of different and like i like the just gesture of the frustration of scribbling them out and when we were at rotterdam a lot of people commented on the ones with the scribbling yeah and how that felt the gesture of that felt quite sort of dismissive or yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you could see it as an installation that's born out of frustration or anger about this idea of unpaid labor, which you lovingly do, but also why is it not appreciated more, I yeah. guess. Uh, but I'm, I don't think that's the only emotions that are in there. Can you talk a little bit about that when you were creating all the works? You said some of them are also funny. Um, yeah, it's still important for me to be funny. I always yeah. try and be funny. So I think, like, you know, with the wish I had a penis, I think, like, the humour always helps to make a point about something. Yeah. And I've always loved cutting out bits of text and keeping them. Yeah. And so I use a lot of funny text and things on here, and I love how they change meaning in different contexts. Um, you use a lot of text in your work anyway, of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah I love it. I also feel some are really soft and maybe a little bit uh, protective of the mother as well, mm. like the fragile stickers. And, yeah. yeah, and I think acknowledging that time when you are feeling very vulnerable and fragile and your hormones everywhere, and I wanted to have a nod to that as well and sort of an acknowledgement with other, uh, solidarity, I think, with women yeah. as well, other women that are going through that as well. Yeah. Definitely. And so this is all one installation. Yesterday, Esther showed me if you stand there, you have this really impressive viewpoint of the whole installation. And then you added these works recently, right? Yeah. So this is one work, and then these works are individual works. Can you talk a little bit about uh, those works behind the desk? Are they Yeah, these um, represent a week, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I just, I love doing that. I love doing these again. <laughs> just doing more. Um, a lot of the hands, which are my favorite, and the breasts, I love like, you, the idea of becoming a breast and you know how just the breasts yeah, yeah. and breasts are always seen in a sexual co context but this is 
you know, the context that they are meant for. Yeah. Um, and so I like milk and the, and the milking of the cow as well, which I really love. <laughs> and um, the stitching, giving this idea of like a net or being caught in a net or a mm. web. Um, and some of the sort of detri detritus from the stuff I've never experienced before, like, you know, breast pads and you know, nappy bags and stuff like that. So I thought it was important to use some of that stuff as well. Yeah, all the things you never knew existed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Great. And then, of course, there's the book. Yes. It's lying right there. Yes, this, is, this book... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Esther. Yeah, fantastic. This shows um, all 600, I'll try and flick, all 650 images, and has a little written piece from me in there, and it has an essay from, um, um, an essay from Dr. Kate McMillan, who does a lot of work, she did a whole report about gender inequality in the art world, and how um, being a mum affects your, um, basically your capacity to be an artist or your success as an artist. Mm -hmm. And so she wrote an essay for it as well. So that's in here too. So I'm super excited to have yeah, that in there from her. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's got everyone. I think it was nice. A book felt natural thing to do because it's more of an accept accessible medium. Than this, this entire installation. Yeah. I know, <laughs> I envy you yeah. if you can, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah so. fantastic. <laughs> Great, well, congratulations on your book. Thank fantastic, you so and on this show, and I'm curious if there's any questions from you guys to Sarah while she's here. Nobody was expecting that. <laughs> no? Great. Yeah. yeah, well then that's then we've discussed it all. Yes. Ooh. Oh. This is uh, I will swap. This oh. is the first one. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, no, that's the first one. <laughs> this is just any old one. We have 400 copies. So it's quite it's quite the first yeah, of 400. It's the first oh. one, so thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you very much. I'm honored to have the first copy. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Oh, good. Yeah, let me check. It is yeah. indeed one out of 400. Great. Thank you so much. And Sarah's here, so if you want to get the book, I, of course, highly recommend it because she can... Sign it maybe for you. Do you want to do that? Some of them are all the time, so great, great. Thank you so much, and thank you for sharing your insights into your beautiful work. So, a round of applause thank for Sarah. <laughs> and I want to cheers to you, but I can't, so I don't have a glass. But yeah. <laughs> thank you so much.